they get in, th and that's their belief, and, that, and that's how they come to it. So, like, what you were saying is that with everything having these... I lost it. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> with, I lost my train of thought. With everything, yeah. with everything having an entity, okay, mm -hmm. because I get visual. That's how I learn. It's like I'll hear scripture and in my head there's a visual going on that God's like downloading or an alien's downloading of showing me something that I didn't know before. I wasn't there. So it's obviously God is showing me something's very special. Mm -hmm. But but yet it's in the future, so I am there. You know, I'm in many places all at the same time. And what it is is when I'm listening and he's he's talking about um when that trumpet blows, the earth is going to climb out of the planet <laughs> and prostrate herself. The sun, she's going to come out of her planet and she's going to prostrate herself. The moon is going to come out of her planet and prostrate herself. Okay? Whoa. Yeah. So yeah, every star, is... every, every thing, as far as you can that imagine, okay is prostrating itself and then basically everything tastes death and then God sits on the throne and he says three times where are my challengers these yeah. other gods <laughs> yell a little louder I can't hear you <laughs> three times and nobody can answer because there is nobody else except the God that sits on the throne you want to call him the Anunnaki King you want to call him Jehovah, you want to call him Yahweh, you want to call him Allah. He's got many beautiful names. And what dawned on me when I was listening to him talking about how he named John, and there was never anybody named John ever before on the planet named John. And all, so far as I remember, my name meaning Princess of the Dawn, right? And it's like, I see myself in the rosy red of that crack of dawn, just, just absolutely enjoying myself, like as a, a photon almost, right? Like, I don't know, right? Yeah. I don't know how else to put it. But it's like I'm in so many places all at the same time. And it's like I am a friend of Jesus, and people can think I'm not a friend of Jesus. That's irrelevant. Because I, I know what happened. You know? He came with the same message. He came with the same message. And it says right in the Quran, like, Jinn and mankind, they get together and they try to write another Quran, which is the Bible. And they twist it around, they turn it around. So they've got all these poor people who really love God, terrified of the mark of the beast and of the Antichrist. Because they don't want them to go into the truth and be saved. So it's like people, okay, if you know you got a defector pope and it's historic and everyone knows about this, this isn't a secret, it's from like the year 400 or something, okay, and, and you got this, this real hate on for Muslims through the, the TV and media and the real pro-Christian and pro-Jewish because neither of them are close to God because thou shalt not worship any God but one, the God. And he's the one who's sending down the religions. And that's what he was explaining in the Nostradamus thing. It's exactly what the wheel is all about. The wheels and the spokes and the centerpiece, okay? You see a wheel and a spokes and a centerpiece and then you see a the outside wheel, no spokes and no centerpiece or something, a bunch of it's yeah, missing. Yeah, I remember that. And then you see a book with writing in it and then you see a book with no writing in it and you see this old guy holding up his finger and uh, there's a, like a time's up uh, hourglass. And it's basically saying everything that you've ever done is written in a book, the good and the bad, and you're going to be weighed on scales, okay? Anybody, and this is where the wheel fits in, God has gone to all the nations and sent each person from their own people a prophet. 
Take that however you want. I don't know what he means by it, only he does. But it's his word, which is Jesus. Or the word of God is one of the names of Jesus, right? So if he's the Messiah, that works for me, right? So when the spokes are removed, that's the rapture. Going into all the religions, all the people that all the yeah. observers who are aliens have been observing us and writing down everything, whispering and non-whispering and and like probably fights breaking out that we can't see left, right, and center. You know, our our angels or our jinn like fighting against bad jinn and you know zapping them with zappers. And there's this whole <laughs> there's this whole you know invisible warfare going on with zapping zappers. <laughs> we can't see it. Yep. The whole point is, is you got these poor people and they, they don't, they don't put it all together. I mean, we've got cave paintings of spaceships. Yeah. We've got carved stones of people hunting dinosaurs. There's actual footprints, I think, in Texas. Following a dinosaur tracks or F something. People, yeah, yeah, it looks like a father and a smaller yeah. footprint. Um, chasing in there like a normal size footprint so they might be young and then you got these huge huge skeletons that are like 15 feet tall got piles of wonked out skeletal uh, skulls yeah that don't look human ones yeah they don't look human um, the suspicion that the Egyptians were um, of a, a UFO thing that's why they're the ones who are welcoming people into the pits of hell because they really did know better they really did okay they were there <laughs> you know what I'm saying <laughs> so yep yep God's not wronging them and so you got all these human people following all the Egyptian deities thinking that they're onto something they're going to be having some problems you know, but you can see how it believes, because God says, yeah, go ahead. Until the day of the trumpet, you, you go ahead and you test them. The ones that pass the test are mine, and the rest of them, they're just going to be fuel, because that's what hell is. It's of rocks and people, and gin. That's the fuel for it. Yeah. So I suspect that when we're removed, um... And it sounds like some people have to be in hell for a little while, and then they get taken out, so they might be left here to go through the tribulation, and then die down here and go home. And they're brought into the garden. But I, I really do believe that the people who uh, really have it together, where they've kind of put it all together, and it's like, okay, you got jinn, you got aliens, mm -hmm. you've got God, Jehovah, you've got Yahweh, you've got Allah, and it's like, you can't deny that it's Jehovah talking when he says about Allah. It's the same guy, right? It is the same guy in the Old Testament too. You know it is. And you can feel it. And you'd be dumb not to think about it. So if you know that there's aliens, and that's why I had two very strong alien experiences. Mm -hmm. and, and in fact, it was at the at those was when because I was going okay there's something wrong Jesus if you're God why are things going wrong and I'm starting to get converted into a Muslim through writing that thesis right mm -hmm. and it's like well Jesus you know like when I died who I saw on the throne didn't look like a human it didn't look like you okay <laughs> thinking it's not you <laughs> if it's not I really need to know who that is <laughs> You know, and that's basically how I ended up meeting Abraham and being told, yeah, yeah, exactly. So nothing's a coincidence ever. It's never a coincidence.